Hello and welcome to 3dpusher.com. My name is Simon Donahue and this is our first sort of practical lesson in real flow. What we're going to do here is we're going to fill up this bottle with some wine and we're going to get it to pour into this glass here as we see in this animation. So um, just simply want to fill this up and actually this bottle should have been a little lighter and because uh, I wanted to see the wine in here and we have a couple of little problems that you know, we sort of encountered in here with our rendering anyway. We actually got some uh, where our liquid hits our glass, which we would really need to re-render that out because um, it's giving us some problems here. But simply, this is to go over sort of, uh, you know, filling up our bottle, um, turning it into a mesh, pouring it in, you know, pouring it into the glass and getting it all done here. So. So let's take a look at uh, what we have in 3D Studio Max. We have our two objects, and they're all animated here. So they're going to simply help us out with our uh, liquids. So we're going to go in here, and we're going to select both items, and we're going to go open the, our export settings. We're going to set this to selected items, and our frame is uh, 0 to 340, which is fine. And then we're going to need to find a place for it, and we're going to save it as parts in our real flow folder that we've created and we're going to export this out and it's going to go ahead and export out all our timeline frames and we should be all set so now we can go into real flow so now looking at real flow we have a new project here so let's uh, bring in our objects so we'll go down to import and let's import our parts in and we're going to set our scale here at, let's go with 0.5. And that's not too bad. It is still pretty big depending on sort of what RealFlow has because you got to figure each one of these boxes are a meter in distance. But RealFlow, you know, sometimes it's a little bigger, uh, better to uh, start off with a, a bigger size just to sort of get a lot more uh, um, simulation out of our fluids. If you go too small, kind of, it doesn't always really work out. Like if we were to go to the actual size of the bottle, um, sometimes it doesn't work really well. So with that said, now that we got it, these in here, we don't have really, we don't have to make these rigid bodies because we're only dealing with particles in this simulation. So we're not going to worry about it. They, you know, it can interact. Sometimes when you bring in geometry like this anyway into real flow and you make it a rigid body, sometimes your particles tend to escape in the middle of your simulation. So I like to keep these as just objects themselves. So let's get something in here to help us out. Let's bring in a gravity because we're going to need that. And let's throw this over here. And then we're going to throw in an emitter here. So let's go create a circle emitter. And we're going to need to resize this up here. So let's try and go with like 1.5 by 1.5. And let's take a look in our top view here. Oh, that might be a little big. Let's try... Uh, Let's just go with one, three, one, three. And that's probably not too bad. So let's just sort of put this in the center of our bottle. That should be fine. And let's take a look here. And let's move this up just a hair. put it about there and let's go back out to our perspective. Now we want to sort of make some changes in here. Um, we want our resolution to be about 7. Uh, I'm going to leave density and internal and external pressure. I'm going to turn down our viscosity to 2 and I don't want too many particles here so let's go with 42,000. Try that. We'll see what that looks like. So now what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to fill this bottle up uh, essentially with liquid. So we're going to lock our timeline here and we're just going to let this sort of simulate out and let it build, get a lot of particles in here. And um, I think after 42,000, hopefully it'll be about halfway full. That's sort of what I want. Um, so we're going to let this run and it should run out of particles and we want it to completely settle. So we're just going to hold off here and uh, 
I'm going to pause the video because this is probably going to take quite a long time for this to settle uh, and simulate all through this. So we're just going to pause this simulation and we will be back. Okay, so we got our liquid to settle here and uh, sort of filled up the bottle a little more than half, which is uh, good. That works for me. Uh, so we're going to do a couple of things here. Let's take our bottle and our glass. And for now, let's actually hide this. And yeah, that looks pretty good. I have one little particle here that's sort of escaped, but sometimes you get this. It's probably stuck in the center of the bottle, so it won't really affect us. So what we're going to need to do in here, we're going to need a couple of things to assure, you know, if we actually spill over, we don't want particles going forever. So let's create a volume demon. And in our volume demon, we want to inverse this. So any particles that go into the box, I want to kill off. And let's just sort of resize this. And definitely need to move this down. And that should probably, actually, let me just unhide one of our objects here. Sort of uh, our uh, demon here, just to the bottom of the glass. That should be fine. Okay, um, I want to throw a plane in here. Uh, because if we actually do have any stuff disappear off or uh, spill out of the glass. I would like this to um, sit on the plane. Let's just drop this down a little bit here. That should be good. Uh, the reason is, you know, if, if something does happen to spill over, I don't want to just go reanimate this again. I just want to make sure that it sort of stays on the plane so it'll look like it's fine in our animation and it'll be a little bit of wine spilled on the countertop. So, all right. So there's a couple of things I'll probably going to want to do here. Um, I think I'm going to throw in a... Uh, couple of demons here. I'm going to throw in a speed demon. And what I'm going to probably want is as this wine starts to pour and then comes to about here, I'm going to want this stuff to sort of settle down. So let's take a look at our speed demon. And I'm going to turn this up a little bit. Um, I'm going to say 16 because some particles might move fast. Now I want to open a curve. And let's go into here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a keyframe. So let's add a key, and we seem to be at a value of very strange here. Let's see, what's our key? This is key zero. So at key zero, we want this to be, let's set this at 270, oops, 270. And we still want this to be 16. And then what we're going to do is let's sort of get this in here so we can see it. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to need another key. And probably at about 320. So let's uh, add a key. And let's go to select the key that we've added here. And let's say it was almost there. 320, and I want to set this to a range of 4. So essentially what we're going to have here, let's get this in here so we can actually see it. Um, essentially what's going to happen is our speed demon is not going to really affect anything until it gets to 270, and then at frame, um, uh, frame or key frame 1, uh, it's going to drop down to about 4. And let's actually just change this. So I want this in a Bezier mode. Sort of make this sort of more of a soft in. And then let's add a keyframe as well. And create key. And let's set this at, let's see, 340 is the end of our simulation. So let's get this to 3, 